Hi guys. Should be a good sunset over there. Hopefully. Oh yeah, it's looking pretty good to be fair. Let me get here. That's it. Oh, I'm going to try and get. So guys, as you can see, what a beautiful evening and I just saw the little midges, I don't know what the kind of what fly they are, we call them midges over here in the UK, they're a little bit annoying um, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to see if I can focus on them, you can just about see them in the video there just below the sun and the RX-10 Mark IV locking on pretty easily um, even at sort of straight into the sun a little bit one buzzing around there, I, I miss loads but you just don't know what they're doing, they're just buzzing around all over, over the place so it did lock on quite a few times shooting at one two thousandth of a second there, got a few shots then obviously had a, worn, a walk up to the uh, bit here and that's actually like a beacon in the UK we've got a line of beacons, I can't remember how far they run but basically, um, I could be wrong on this, I need, you know, I need to check on it but um, probably back in 2000 I think it was, they lit them all and you could see them for miles and miles and miles that could be the wrong date but that's what they had done once I was just pointing towards that there, um, there's other ones uh, around that obviously they could be seen from each other as such. As you can see there the sun going down was absolutely beautiful. Managed to get a couple of snaps here of looking through the wild flowers and plants and everything there. A couple of shots there, one at around 100 millimeters, and the other one at 600. Obviously making the sun nice and big. That's Dungeness, the nuclear power station in the distance, a place I've been to a few times. There will be some videos that I have already on my uh, channel that you can check out. Um, as you can see there, massive line of cloud. And I was like, no. And basically the sun was gone. Um, as you can see there, loads of mist, but the sun was behind there. So I hopped back in the car. And uh, I just got the car back. It's been in the garage for four weeks, uh, waiting for parts. So I had a new clutch and flywheel and loads of other bits and pieces as well drives beautifully now it's absolutely lovely you know you know what you know what i like about this car it's uh it's great fun and looks great and uh puts a smile on my face every time i drive it uh, very under estimated as such anyway so drive down to pet level which you would have seen a lot of times before and i thought well the light's going now i wonder what the rx10 mark 4 is going to be like after dusk one for moving targets and one just to see if this tide was out. I couldn't remember if the tide was out or in. Um, came up behind the usual evening driver doing 30 and a 60 or whatever they were doing. Not very fast anyway. It doesn't really matter. But I thought, well, I'm not going to overtake him. I'll be sensible for once and just pull in here just on the left. And started snapping the birds. As you can see here, my shot speed was too slow. It wasn't a focusing issue and I was too slow in cap keeping up with the birds flying around. So what they were doing, they were actually catching the flies. Uh, you'll see in a minute a, a sequence that I managed to capture, but as you can see there, a couple of times it missed focus. This is where the, this is where it was starting to struggle. The light was going, even though it looks like it's not that dark. I've turned the ISO up to about a thousand, um, but my shutter speed was too slow. It was about one three twentieth of a second there. And you know, it, it started to struggle a little bit. That's about one five hundredth of a second. As you can see there, the sky is now on a nice orange colour in places but this is the sequence so this bird here was actually after that fly you can see it there and he actually has it but I've brightened all of these pictures up quite considerably and you'll see the last one there he goes he gets the fly so shooting at 24 photos per second it allowed me to capture that relatively sharp shots it missed focus on a couple sort of um, I was shooting at one thousandth of a second and I cranked it up, I think, to yeah, I think it was ISO 1000, F4, and it did pretty well. Uh, but it's a case of staying with the bird, and it was actually dark enough that I couldn't really see him that well. It's all right when he was up in the sky a little bit, because obviously it's almost backlit. Um, but once he dropped down below sort of tree level, and me missing him a few times, uh, you know, it, I, I, you know, I, I did wonder if it was actually the camera was still staying on him, and it did actually. So 
there's a few sequences like this which I captured, but this was a more interesting one just because I actually got him or her uh, capturing the um, fly itself. So that was kind of cool. Um, as you can see here, you know, it, it is dark and yet the pictures are quite noisy. But then we're shooting at ISO 1000 and the light is crap. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter what camera you're really going to be using to do shots like this, you are going to end up with grain generally. You know, so. As you can see there, it's still focusing or trying to focus on, on the animal quite well. Um, even down into the dark, darker side of the shadows and everything now, it's still locking on. This is zoomed in by the way, these are um, zoomed in about 50% each image here. Or even up to 75% some of them. As you can see, it is grainy, yeah, we're not looking at that at all. It's more to see what the autofocus system would be able to do. And as you can see there, it does misfocus slightly. Um, and then he's out of shot. And this that was at 600 millimeters, but still cropped in uh, quite a lot there. As you can see, the grain is larger than normal. Um, but I'll just give you an example. This is a rough estimate of what I was kind of seeing. It was it was pretty dark. I couldn't even see the animal's face. So bringing that image back up um, to give an okay quality shot, it was kind of like that, you know. But that was quite cool with all the midges, the little flies there on the right hand side, and the bird trying to capture one that was just in front of him. This is some slow motion which I'd actually shot before, of the midges, or whatever you want to call them, flying around in slow motion, so that's at 500 frames per second, which was pretty cool. But they were bizarre stuff. One minute they're above your head, and the next minute you look up and you go, oh, they've gone, and what? where have they gone to? And then suddenly they're back again. They're really, really strange little flying animals. And you can see there the gulls just snapping away at them, trying to get bugs. I thought this was quite cool, because the car is in the distance, but the bugs are a lot closer, so they kind of almost look like they're big locusts or something then I decided you know what I'm going to go down to Hastings Beach um, near where the fishing huts are and over the fishing boats and just have a quick look and maybe take some low light shots of the boats or something like that because it was a, it was a beautiful evening but obviously the light had gone much sooner than I expected just because we had that huge cloud in the distance which obviously zapped all the sunlight away as you can see there's a tiny little bit in the distance there um, but as you can see it's pretty dark generally uh, you know, so I did think, you know what, I'm going to go down. I've got a small tripod with me in the car. I always keep a, a mini, mini tripod in the car so I can use whichever camera I've got and I can just get some shots, you know, if I need to. So, one of the car, just with the old uh, down lighter off the bottom of the door and the sea in the front. But as you can see, my car actually goes almost blue just from the colour of the sky because it's so white. Some fishermen up the top, so I was doing 30 second exposures. One to sort of get the sea a bit misty, but also the fishing out there on the sea wall we're actually moving around a little bit as well which was kind of cool and there's another one there zoomed in that's actually a crop in not a zoom in so I wasn't I wasn't at a 600 there you go that's the actual shot originally um, to show you the sharpness and how well it even you know coped out as I say 100 uh, 30 seconds at f4 another one uh, another 30 second uh, exposure there sea's gone all misty 24 millimeters I say 130 seconds and that was f4 no, f5.6 sorry f5.6 for that one here's another shot here i was down to just over half a second to get the sort of bit of movement in the waves um, i thought that worked quite nicely and obviously the fishermen up in the distance there as you can see the light had changed and then just for the last shot of the evening car shot um, a few stars starting to appear in the sky and that was shot at iso 100 as you can see there, the, the colours and everything in my car are very odd because of the, because it's such a bright white, it does seem to absorb colour, uh, especially blues, and it has transfer transformed itself into almost a bluey, sort of uh, yellowy colour, depending on that street light there reflecting. But, you know, interesting. Just some fun, guys. It was just a nice evening out. I thought, I'm gonna, I've got the car back, I'm going to take it for a blast, make sure it drives well. And uh, yeah, so anyway, don't forget to click the subscribe button, little notification bell as well. Any questions about the RX10 or the A7R4, A7R3, or any other Sony cameras I might be able to help with, feel free to comment below. Um, yeah, so I shall see you soon with some more videos coming. And like I say, um, check out the other videos I've done before, and I'll see you soon.